The first TV mom has to be Harriet Nelson because she was not only the TV mom of Rick and David, but she was their real mom. During the 50s and 60s, Harriet was the nation's mom also. She was born Peggy Lou Snyder on July the 18th, 1909 in Des Moines, Iowa. Harriet was born into a show business family and performed on vaudeville stage at the age of three and she made her debut on Broadway as a teenager. The fast-paced show business life made schooling and normal life almost impossible. In 1930, she married comedian Roy Sadler. It was short-lived, and Harriet said that it was a bad situation and had their marriage annulled. In 1932, she met saxophone player Ozzie Nelson who hired her as a vocalist for his band and changed her name to Harriet Hillard, a more professional-sounding name. In 1935, she married Ozzy, but continued acting under a one-year contract with RKO. She was in several movies, and her career was beginning to bloom. Ozzy said that they decided it was more important for her to stay with the band and their fledgling radio show. In 1944, the couple began a comedy radio show that they call The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. It was easy to transfer the radio show to television in 1952. It lasted for 14 years. Peter Jones, the director of the documentary Ozzie and Harriet, said that she was a bombshell, that she had beauty and talent to be a major star, but she had rather be Ozzy's wife and Rick and David's mother. Harriet Nelson passed away on October the 2nd, 1994, from congestive heart failure at the age of 85. In 1957, CBS introduced the American public to a comedy domestic sitcom called Leave it to Beaver. It'll last for seven years until 1963. The Cleaver family will consist of the Beaver, played by Jerry Mathers, his brother Wally, played by Tony Dow, their father Ward, played by Hugh Beaumont, and their mom, June, played by Barbara Billingsley. My vivid memory of June Cleaver, Beaver and Wally's mom, was her washing dishes in an apron, wearing high heels and a pearl necklace. It all makes sense when you know the reason behind the high heels. They come later as the boys was getting taller, and it was to keep them from tiring over their mom. As for the necklace, Barbara felt that she had a sunk-in place in her neck that the necklace helped to hide. Barbara said she had two boys of her own during the time she was doing the show, and she didn't know where one started and the other left off. She said June Cleaver was just an extension of myself. She loved the idea of having such a perfect family. Could have been because when she was four, her parents divorced. Barbara had one older sister, Elizabeth. After her parents divorced, her mother went to work at a knitting mill. Her dad was a Los Angeles policeman, later to become an assistant chief of police. After one year at Los Angeles Junior College, Billingsley traveled to New York where she got a $60 a week job as a model. In 1941, at the age of 25, she married Glenn Billingsley. They will have two sons, Drew and Glenn Jr., Barbara and Glenn moved to Los Angeles, where she got minor parts in several movies, and he opened a restaurant. And in 1947, after six years of marriage, Barbara and Glenn divorced. She became a single mom for the next three years. In 1953, Billingsley married Roy Colino, a British movie director. 
Roy would pass away three years later in 1956 from a sudden heart attack at the age of 44. Barbara had just become a new widow when she was picked to play the part of June Cleaver. In 1959, while she was still on Leave It to Beaver, Billingsley would marry Dr. William Mortensen. They will be together until his death in 1981. She'll not marry again. Barbara Billingsley passed away on October the 16th, 2010, in Santa Monica from polymyalgia at the age of 94. On September 24, 1958, ABC TV presented The Donna Reed Show. It will continue until March 1966, starring an already established movie star, Donna Reed. Donna played mother to Mary and Jeff, played by Shelley Fabre and Paul Peterson. Donna's husband, Dr. Alex Stone, was played by Carl Betts. It was the first sitcom to feature the mother as the center of the show. Friends say that Donna Stone was identical to Donna Reed, who raised four children of her own. The actor Robert Blake said when he was eight years old that he had never felt a mother's love or been helped while growing up until he played in the 1942 movie Monkey with Donna Reed who showed him a mother's kindness. Reed received numerous Emmy Award nominations for her role as Donna Stone and the Golden Globe Award for Best TV Actor of 1963. Reed was born Donna Bell Mullinger on January 21, 1921 as a farm girl outside of Denison, Iowa. She was the oldest of five children. After graduating from Denison High School in 1938, she went to California and enrolled at the Los Angeles City College. She performed in several school plays and was offered several screen tests because of her looks, even though she intended to become a teacher. MGM changed her name to Donna Reed as World War II was going on and Mullinger was a German name. Donna said that she never liked the name Reed. She said, when I hear the name Reed, I think of a tall, slender, chic blonde, and that's just not me. In 1943, Donna married makeup artist William Tuttle. It was short-lived and divorced the next year. In 1945, she married Tony Owens, agent and producer. During their marriage, they had four kids, two adopted. The next year, 1946, Reed will star along with Jimmy Stewart in the classic movie, It's a Wonderful Life. During filming, Lionel Barrymore bet Donna $50 that she couldn't milk a cow. After she had told him that she was a farm girl, he paid off. In 1953, Donna will receive the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress as Montgomery Cliff's girlfriend, and from here to eternity. And in 1958, Donna's husband, Tony Owens, will produce the Donna Reed Show. In 1971, after 26 years of marriage, Donna and Tony Owens divorced. Three years after divorcing Tony, Donna will marry Colonel Grover Asmus. They'll remain married until her death on January the 14th, 1986, at the age of 64, from pancreatic cancer. In September 1969 until March 1974, the ABC viewing audience will be introduced to the Brady Bunch, where Carol Brady, played by actress Florence Henderson, becomes mom to six children, three of her own. Marshall, played by Maureen McCormick, Jan, played by Eve Plum, and Cindy, played by Susan Olson. When Carol marries a widow, Mike Brady, played by Robert Reed, who has three boys of his own, 
Craig, the oldest, played by Barry Williams. Peter, played by Christopher Knight. And Bobby, played by Mike Lookingland. The show never explained what happened to Carol's first husband. They first had her divorce, but then thought that that was too risque for the times, so they just left it up to the imagination of the audience. With her architect husband away at work every day, Carol Brady, a stay-at-home mom, is left to solve all the problems created by her six kids. With only the occasional help of the housekeeper, Alice, played by Ann B. Davis. Florence Agnes Henderson was born February the 14th, 1934, in Dale, Indiana. She was the youngest of ten kids. Her mother, Elizabeth, was a homemaker, and her dad, Joseph, was a tobacco sharecropper. When Florence was 12, she was singing at openings of supermarkets. She went to high school at St. Francis Academy in Owensburg, Kentucky. She graduated in 1951, and from there she went to New York and enrolled in the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. She will soon begin to get small parts on the stage and then work into parts on TV shows. In 1956, Florence married Ira Bernstein. They'll have four kids, Barbara, Elizabeth, Robert, and Joseph. In 1969, she was encouraged by her husband to take the part of Carol Brady. Nine years after the end of the Brady Bunch, where Henderson became known as America's mom, she and Ira Bernstein will divorce in 1985 after 29 years of marriage. Florence will later admit the divorce was her idea. Also in 1985, she was being treated by Dr. John Copples for depression, stage fright, and fear of flying when she fell in love with her doctor. Two years later, in 1987, they'll marry. They'll remain married for 15 years until his death in 2002. Dr. Koppel run a hypnotherapist institute in Los Angeles, and Florence will become a qualified hypnotherapist herself. Fourteen years after Dr. Koppel's death, Florence attended the recording of Dancing with Stars in order to support her friend Maureen McCormick, who had played Marshall on The Brady Bunch. Florence had also performed on the show in 2010. Three days after supporting Maureen, on the 24th of November 2016, Florence Agnes Henderson was rushed to the Cedar sinai Hospital in Los Angeles, where she passed away suddenly with heart failure. She was 82 years old. She had no record of past heart trouble. In September of 1970, until August the 24th, 1974, actress Shirley Jones will become mom to her five TV children on ABC's musical sitcom, The Partridge Family. The show was loosely based on the singing family group, The Cow Seals. Shirley was close friends with Florence Henderson and was actually offered the part of Carol Brady first, but she declined and opened it up for Henderson. Mom Shirley Jones will play Shirley Partridge, widowed mother of five. David Cassidy, the real stepson of Shirley Jones, played Keith Partridge, who is lead vocalist for the Partridge family band. Susan Day played Laurie Partridge, vocalist and organ player. Next was Danny Bonaducci as Danny Partridge, bass player. Susan Crowell played Tracy Partridge. The first year, Jerome Gilwax played Chris, and Brian Foster played Chris for the last three years. David Madden was their agent, Reuben Kincaid. The kids had talked their mom into forming a band, and when they had a hit record, they began traveling the country in a school bus. Shirley Mae Jones was born 31 March 1934 near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Her dad, Paul Jones, owned the Jones Brewing Company, and her mother, Marjorie, was a homemaker. 
Shirley began singing in front of family and friends at the age of six. At the age of 18 in 1952, Shirley won Miss Pittsburgh and then was second place runner-up to Miss Pennsylvania. She won a scholarship to a drama school in New York plus $500. Her parents drove her to New York for an audition for Rodgers and Hammerstein's South Pacific. It started a six-decade acting career. Through her career, she starred in several musical films, such as Oklahoma with Gordon McRae, Carousel also with McRae. Frank Sinatra had started out playing Billy Bigelow, but Sinatra quit in order to get back home to his wife, Ava Gardner. They were having problems. In The Music Man, she starred with Robert Preston. She had a squeaky clean reputation in the movies as a girl next door. It was not far from her real life, as she once said, the first time she made love was at the age of 21 to her husband, Jack Cassidy. Jack had been married before and had one son, David Cassidy. David was six years old when Shirley and Jack married in 1956. They will have three sons together. Sean, Patrick, and Ryan. In 1960, while married to Jack Cassidy, Shirley played the part of a prostitute in Elmer Gantry in order to change her screen persona. It must have worked because she won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for her betrayal of Lula Baines. Jack, through the years, developed a drinking problem and he and Shirley divorced in May of 1975. On December 11, 1976, Jack called Shirley to come to his West Hollywood apartment. He was drinking, and she refused. He had also called others that day, and they also refused. The next day on December 12, 1976, police discovered a fire coming from his apartment. It was determined that he went to sleep on the couch with a cigarette still burning. Years after his death, Shirley stated that she was sure if he had lived, they would be together today. A year after Jack's death, Shirley meets comedian Marty Ingalls at an arts exhibit given by Michael Landon. They'll marry on the 13th of November, 1977. While married to Marty in 2015, Shirley learned that Suzanne Crowell, who had played Tracy on the Partridge family, had suddenly died while sitting at the dining room table from heart failure at the age of 52. Shirley, through the years, had kept in touch with her and said that she looked on her as being her TV baby daughter through the years. It was a terrible shock. Shirley and Marty Ingalls remained married until his death on the 21st of October, 2017. One month after Marty's death, Shirley's stepson, David Cassidy, passed away on November 21, 2017, at the age of 67 from liver and kidney failure. David was estranged from the family for years, Shirley said, and it broke our hearts. Shirley Mae Jones is now in her 80s and still has that wholesome, beautiful face.